Hi everyone and welcome to EGX 2017. I'm James and I'm here to play some games and probably wait in a quite a lot of queues as well. Uh, let's take a look. So now I've had a chance to look around, what do I think of the show? Well, this year there's definitely a lot less Xbox, it feels like anyway, and considering that Xbox One X is coming out soon, you would kind of expect there to be a bit more. Maybe that's just me. They've got fair unknown Battlegrounds being shown off on Xbox One, they've made no announcements about Xbox One X of course, but it seems like a great opportunity to go big on what's the biggest game in the world right now, and they haven't. Um, Sony here in droves as usual, plenty of stuff going on over there, Destiny 2 is massive, even though the game's already come out, but there's a lot of indie activity right front and centre, similar to last year, there's a lot of indie devs down there really showing off some great games actually. We've already spoken to a couple of devs this morning, a couple more later this afternoon, and it's great to see the calibre of games being raised in terms of what's been put out there. For now, there's plenty more to do. There's just about enough time to jump in the queue for something uh, before I head to my next thing, so I'll see you later. Raiders is self-published, um, so that means that the team can make decisions which maybe a bigger publisher wouldn't. Um, we want the, we want the game to we want as many people to play the game, and we want the game to evolve based on player input. So when we by having these individual campaigns, every campaign is running in parallel in terms of the story. So that means that once campaign two or three come out, someone could just get those without having played campaign one because it focuses on different characters. Because we're releasing the campaigns periodically, we can actually evolve the game while we're still kind of re releasing the first sort of season, so to speak. Uh, one character in particular, Alicia, she is kind of more of an assault character. Um, she's quite different to the others in the sense that um, there's a stress level in the game. If you can manage your stress, there's a yellow bar. Um, when you shoot a gun or if you start running, it will stress you out, which means that enemies can see you through walls. Alicia is not like that. She's always stressed. When, when you jump off a wall as Alicia, if you aim in midair, her descent slows down and she's got a fast repeating shotgun, so you can just literally help people in the, in the face. We want to make the game as accessible as possible, which is why we're releasing the prologue for free on the PlayStation Store, the Xbox Store and Steam. Um, and after that, campaigns will be launching periodically. We've had a lot of players coming away going like, that's not what I was expecting from this game. You know, people sit down and be like, yeah, I'll have a quick go on it. And like 10, 15 minutes later, they walk away going like, okay, it's a twin stick shooter with idle elements. So if you think of games like Geometry Wars or Super Stardust or stuff like that, I absolutely love those games. Um, but I'd only ever play them in one session because I'd be like, right, that was really good, really intense. Now I need to put it down, do something else. Whew. So what we've tried to do is create a game where you have those sort of five minutes of really intense gameplay interspersed with something that keeps you coming back and gives you like a really long-term sense of progression. Basically, you're the CEO of a big company and you are out to make as much moolah, the universal currency, as possible. So everything that you shoot will drop moolah, which are the little yellow things, well, the yellow things you see about floating in space. You get that by mining asteroids or by shooting enemies. And there's a third way of getting it, which is collecting some moolah, landing on a planet, and building factories and strip malls and casinos and that sort of stuff, which will generate cash, even when you're not doing anything, even when the game's paused, it will keep generating cash. So if you've ever played any idle games like Cookie Clicker, which is very, very addictive, let's say. I'm not sure if I like that game, but I can't stop playing it. Um, basically, we use that as a, a way of keeping you coming back. And we, we kind of drip feed the player content all the time, so there's always something just out of reach. I'll just play for five more minutes. I'll unlock that in two minutes' time. I'll just, just, just five more minutes. So 
So Hyper Sentinel, it's a Neo Retro arcade shoot 'em up game. So it's inspired by those kind of classic 8-bit style shoot 'em up games, but with modern effects, modern game design principles. You know, you've got medals, you've got a survival mode in there, which is like an endless battle against the the, the alien horde. It's one of those games that's got a lot of depth, easy to pick up and play, but difficult to master. And it's, it, you, you teach the player through the first level or two the basics of this is how you shoot enemies, this is how you complete the level, you know, get through the objectives. It's like a love letter to classic 8-bit uh, shmups, right? So, you know, R-Type and those kind of games, all sorts of inspiration in there. We've got spectacular weapon upgrades and power-ups, we've got boss battles in there. Um, but it's not, it's not just about sort of being inspired by what's gone in the past. We're adding something new to it. You know, it's, it's running in 4K, 60 frames a second, HDR if you've got the, if you've got the right equipment. Um, and it's about kind of taking it to a new level. Hope you enjoyed that little look at EGX 2017. If you like this, then comment below and let us know, and be sure to subscribe for more from Past the Controller.